Hello and welcome back everybody for our final series of the day for week three, day two. We have our super heavyweight SmackDown ahead of us with 100 Thieves Challengers versus Cloud9 Challengers. Deserex, this is what we've been waiting for. I've been dying for this matchup. We have so much hype between both squads. You know, all this experience that we have on one roster mixed with the young, talented prospects. Mm -hmm. Same goes the opposite way. And uh, don't even get me started on MNS. I mean, this is going to be a slobber knocker, Steve. But I will say, I think beat that. It was you that brought this up. Or maybe it was Desert, because I don't remember if I misquoted we'll it right it now. Me. But it might have been the last series. It actually turned into the Super Heavyweight SmackDown. Because yeah. Team Liquid <laughs> first actually take the game of Team Liquid Challengers. I know that we're getting ready for the next series. But I also got to bring us back to what just happened. Because we haven't really... I haven't emotionally recovered from that. Honestly. Me neither. I mean, realistically... That's the first 1-1 we've had this weekend on this stream in yeah. particular. Yesterday was a bunch of 2-0s. Our first series was a 2-0. And one of the most unexpected results ended up coming through here for Team Liquid first. So props to them for making it happen. And I think it got us at a pretty nice energy level for another hype series here in 100 Thieves vs. Cloud9. Exactly. We've been hyping it up all weekend. We made a silly little video for it. A great video. X, of course, on the audio, myself on the oh. edits. And uh, I think that we did it justice this time around. We've been scaling as we've been going. So let's not waste any time. Let's take a look at our featured matchup for the Super Heavyweight SmackDown. Ten players. Heavyweight. One match. Smackdown. Super Heavyweight Finally, a SmackDown! The whole family can enjoy! Bring your mama, bring your auntie, even great grandma Bertha, because this week's event is a brawl for all! Teaming up in the red corner! An org with the legacy of developing talent, and this roster doesn't lack for that! Three players with LCS experience forming its core. A jungler who knows no fear, living up to the expectations set by those who came before. And a Korean mid laner with 20 solo kills in eight games, whose ceiling is nowhere in sight. Pro teams should quake as semi-pros crumble! Cloud Nine Challengers! And in the blue corner! Following the precedence of their LCS team, combining rookie talents with experience. Their top side is the two youngest players in the league. But don't you dare underestimate them, or they'll send you to the retirement home. Enabling them from the rest of the map, two Oceanic players with a good-looking future, and an LEC first-team All-Pro ADC. This team isn't just competing for the title, they're competing for the future of the region! 100 Thieves Challengers! Bring your family, bring your dog, and bring your whole damn house! This weekend, everyone is invited to brawl at the Super Heavyweight SmackDown! The SmackDown of the Super Heavyweight category coming up next! That's works great job on the musical Thank track. You. That was incredible. Good by job the way. on the video. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? With our powers like combined, men. content. But let's take a look at the teams themselves <laughs> and go over why exactly they're so hyped up. Hundred Thieves Challengers up first. The roster with the two youngest players on the top half of the map. Two Oceanic players in Pretty and Destiny. Pretty technically counts as Oceanic. Uh, and then Unforgiven, <laughs> the first. Team All Pro 80 carry beatdown. This is like the quintessential mix young rookie talent with veterans for this kind of equation of success that many teams have been trying to emulate. And I mean, it's just an exciting roster to look at. I mean, across the board, Sniper, Yukino, of course, are the hypest process. Unforgiven is, you said it. LEC Summer All Pro from last year. The level that this guy should be playing on, I think has been so far, is just unreal. Both him and Destiny coming in late, but coming in have started to look really good and are trying to make that push for best bot lane in the league. And I mean, look at their matchup, who they have to contend with. That's how they're gonna earn it. These challengers have so many reasons to be excited about them. Whether you're just a fan of good League of Legends, whether you're a fan of developing talent, but their opponents here, no slouches coming off of a rough day yesterday, but still a powerhouse roster. Deserex, Cloud9 Challengers, 
are the real deal, despite the fact that maybe you can argue consistency is something they need to strive for <laughs> after losing yesterday, <laughs> but firepower is not something that they lack in. No, they do not lack that whatsoever. I mean, MNS was someone we were like really excited about to see in the league just because of how mechanically gifted and how many times this dude will just hand check people. Yep. Uh, you, you pair that off with some of the experience of having players such as like Zazel uh, in your support role, someone so vocal, someone who uh, does a lot for this roster, as well as Tomio taking a slot over there in the jungle role uh, after being transferred from Evil Geniuses. There's so much firepower on this roster. They've been looking pretty, pretty good so far to start off the season. Even with what's been going on, I mean, sure, sure, you've had moments of tilt here and there where things get a little bit slippery, but that's the thing. Domination is their consistent form. Pretty much, and a lot of that is mid lane. What we learned yesterday is if MNS doesn't get ahead, if he doesn't gap his opponent's opposing mid laner, he can struggle to be as relevant and the team can struggle to be as relevant as well. So what I'm looking for here, players like Lost to step up who has been performing incredibly well in the bot lane. I think Lost Zazel might be one of our best bot lanes beatdown. I don't know if you have a, a dissenting opinion there, but I would definitely rank them towards the top three, along with Unforgiven and Destiny, which makes it even that much more exciting of a matchup. I mean, if we're talking right now, today, going into this matchup, I'm going to say Lost and Zazel, best bot lane in the league. Like, Ooh. I, yeah, oh. like these guys have been playing out of their minds since the season started. Zazel coming back to competitive clearly hasn't missed a beat, and Lost has been performing very well. Even yesterday, in the match where they got o 2 in my opinion, I think Lost and Zazel, especially in the laning phase, still played very well. They just weren't able to close things out overall. I, I, they're covering a lot of what we have coming out from the issues of uh, Cloud9 Challengers. One of that being, we got to see what happens when this team is tested and tilted, and that happened versus mm. Wildcard game number two. Eminem has mm. just kind of threw things away, and that's where you got to see Lost and Zazel kind of lift things up from the back end to try and still stay active within that map. Uh, it's something they're definitely going to need because there's no shortage of talent on the opposite side of things when we talk about 100 Thieves Challengers. I think that every lane you look at here has a uh, impactful narrative, a reason to care. Sniper versus Fake God, both having 100 Thieves backgrounds, both yep. been looking pretty good this season. Yeah. Fake God's kind of on this comeback tour right now where we weren't sure what his competitive future was going to look like. We've known what Sniper's competitive future would look like for like two years now. This player <laughs> has been developing for Longer. so long. And 100 Thieves from the next program now finally getting him because I, I believe he's only 16. He just hit old enough Both to play now in Challenger along with Yukino, yeah. Uh, it's like it, the, the top lane is almost under the radar compared to all the other lanes and all the other looks that we've been focusing on. But even that has this cool storyline and a reason to care. And looking at some of the interviews that we got from General Sniper, especially in the offseason, it was fun to see how much confidence this kid just has in yeah. himself. Uh, I've said it in previous broadcasts before, but he was saying that, oh, I want to take down someday. I want to take down Whippo. I don't care about these NACL <laughs> top laners. I want to go where the money is. And I mean, with performances we've been seeing, the solo kill Sniper's been getting against a lot of these big names. Uh, I'm excited for this young prospect. I think confidence is uh, a great thing to have for a young player. I love to see that, but you got to back it up with some gameplay. And I'm going to say that there's a reason this is a super heavyweight SmackDown because either side could realistically take this. It will come down to performance. So let's not waste any more time and see what they have cooked up for game number one because Pick and Ban is ready. All right, let's take us to the draft without calling Kangas bald, but only alluding to it at least once as we have our super Progress. heavyweight SmackDown. And again, I am very hyped up for this one, uh, mostly because of solo lanes, but opposite areas, Sniper, MNS, I think they're the most exciting players to really watch in the NACL. I think realistically, uh, I agree. Sniper, MNS are two players if we want to isolate two, but it's crazy that you look at this matchup. This has got to be one of the most exciting ones we've had so far in the NACL in spring, just because of the fact that you look at each of these matchups, both in skill and storyline, and there's just so much for us to be talking about here, so much for us to be expecting. So you got to imagine this has got to be such a great matchup coming through into today. And I'm excited, regardless of how it's going to turn out. We've had a banger day, even if it was a slow start, Eric, and I'm hoping we finish with a bang. 
Yeah, we've had a pretty long day to that regard, but yeah. I mean, we've saved what we are assuming is the best for last in 100 Thieves versus C9. Theoretically. Oh, okay, final bands coming in. Uh, lots of jungle bands towards Tomio, taking away his Vine and Elise, as well as that Kassadin ban. Uh, gotta have it stock standard because if MNS hits 16 on a Kassadin, I fear for 100 Thieves challengers. First pick for 100 Thieves, the Sejuani. Yep, big. Big jungle pick at the moment here. So the response is what I'm interested to see. Bot lane, more oh, like it. The open. last few games we've had, bot lane has been largely ignored first rotation. And even though we complain about the consistency of it, it almost is comforting now. We're going back to what we expect here. The Lucian with the Maokai. You got Zeri, Lulu, hey, Nami. Nami. Yep. I'm almost, I actually, I'm happy to see it actually. Are you happy to see it? What do you mean? I mean Why? <laughs> It's, it's kind of cool sometimes. Unforgiven's pretty nasty at the Zeri. Lost is pretty nasty in general, but on the Lucian, like this 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 is the bot lane matchup where play the hyper carries, play the, the lane dominant. But I want to see. Okay, it. okay. You know what? Fine. I'll jump on board. Maybe I'm just a little bit too Let's much go. with the Moose Hater stuff and the Garens and Allowies yeah. and whatnot. Garen but bot is real. Get, I'm sorry. When you get a high intensity play coming out like we have uh, expected soon. Doesn't really matter what the draft is going to be there. Uh, first bounce now coming in for the second phase. I mean, you got your bot lanes decided for both ends as well as the jungle pool. So it's all going to be about the solo lanes. Fiora taking off the map. Yeah, you got to imagine it's going to stay that way, especially because 100 Thieves probably looking to take away some picks as well, just because of the fact that Sniper more than likely blinding in the top side. And it got a lot of options here. I mean, we saw the Gangplank hover, Tease, Renekton, uh, Gwen, Cassante is a lot of things that this player is willing to pull out. And what he pulls out in the Fake God is going to be so exciting because, like Kank has said, 100 Thieves background between the top laners here. That connection in the org makes this one even more exciting. And Sniper does have a decent level of flexibility if you want to play towards it. I remember last summer, Sniper kind of started to frequent more towards the tanks, the Gnar. Orn, alongside those aggressive picks like the Fiora. So you still have a diverse pool that you can work with as these bands are very, very much targeted towards Sniper, Jax, and Fiora taken off the map. Yeah, I think it's a Cassante angle for Freight God. Those are two champs that play pretty well into him, Fiora especially. So I think that's what C9 are setting up for. And you're just going to give MNS that last pick in mid. I mean, he's the star player that we keep talking about. I've been so excited about. Celebrated his 20th solo kill. Last weekend, the end of week two. It's the first yeah. week of play, wasn't it? Second week, second week. No, his first week. Oh, his? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. He's been there from the start. He's been there from the start. He wasn't there from the start, was he? Yeah. You know what? Like... I gotta double check that. You might be right. You might be right. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you check that. But, all right. Next pick coming in. Uh, I'm sorry to derail you there, Beat. You know, sometimes we've got 16 teams, so many in the league that we got to keep count of. True. Um, lock in for C9 challengers is going to be the Renekton, so they will have that over there for the top side. This will allow Sniper to opt in to a counter pick if he so sees it. That's right. And so instead, they want to secure just a safe blind in the top side. And I mean, Asante is still up and available. I think really good champion. Sniper's been playing it. I think that's an easy lock in, realistically, all things considered. Unless you want to go for something like the Gangplank as well. You have plenty of CC with the uh, Sejuani, and even technically the uh, Wild Growth from the Lulu offers a good bit of CC and team fighting capabilities there as well. But I think the Cassante lock in makes the most sense. For MNS, so the Rise Hover makes a lot of sense here. I mean, we're, it's more standard than what we've been seeing from him before. Talia would be interesting because Pretty is the Talia player. And I think he's just cycling champions. So I'm sure in like eight seconds or so, we'll get the lock in. I wouldn't mind a Vex. Vex, uh, we already got a highlight real play off of the Vex uh, very early on for MNS. And I did double check, by the way. You are right, B-Town. I was thinking Blaze all of the Lulu. That's where I got mixed up there. But our final lock in is going to be that Corky. MNS looking to play that one. Yes, he got a big brain beat. I see it. I see it. Uh huh. And the Corky play. That's an, uh, is an interesting one. Corky is here. I mean, it's a matchup. I won't say it's all this time. I know it's been around for a long time. My league history isn't uh, that nice well practiced. All, this time. all right, you know what? You know, you know more than me in that regard. So I'll take your word for it. And uh, it's a scaling pick. Great for team fighting. And you look at C9 Challengers comp overall. Team fighting is the name of the game for both of these teams, realistically. And I'm expecting. A lot of skirmishing more from 100 Thieves side of the map because you have that Azir, 
with the Sejuani. I think are better yeah. skirmishing versus something like the Maokai and something pretty weak early on like the Corky, especially with the Lulu support. So I imagine Hunter Thieves will have a lot more agency, at least in the earlier minutes of the game. And I'm expecting to see Yukino take advantage of that. I, I expect the exact same thing to that regard, just because of the way Yukino and Sniper have been playing. They, too. they like to throw early. They like to fight early, and they will look to make plays. Yukino's been absolutely spectacular at that. Remember, throw means something very specific. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, yeah. You, you you got a lot of potential coming out from this very, very young 16-year-old top jungle duo We're on the side with Sniper and Yukino. But let's take a look at these votes coming in already. Nice. Already heavily favoring our young young prospects in uh, 100 Thieves Challengers. All right. So far, though, if you, want, if you agree or you think C9 is not getting enough love, go ahead and spam their team votes in the chat and... Help us populate these percentages and see how that one goes through. Now, as for the in-game, nothing crazy going on at level one, which I think is to be expected. Tomio, Yukino, I mean, we talk about the 100 Thieves history on the top side. We can talk about the EG history with these junglers, Eric. Both came up from Evil Genius Prodigies, their affiliate team that they were running last year, and actually for the last few years until this year found a lot of good talent on those teams the pipelines for her it was a hundred thieves and evil geniuses had a lot of success in just pulling oh, out these yes. young, young players you know egp most notably jojo pion is one we talk about all the time danny uh, danny yeah when danny he was called well, shiro um 400 thieves next uh just look at their <laughs> latest two call-ups in tenacity and busio yeah um, They've been great at developing talent, and it always gets exciting because you you have these young prospects who show up and actually put up the performances expected of them. Sniper and Yukino have been two of those who stand out. For sure. And we're hoping that development continues. I mean, Sniper alone, one of the most hyped up players. It's got to be the most hyped up player in, in League of Legends. Like, like generationally, like talent-wise, like nobody yeah. has... There's no player that people have been excited for to go to things like LCS years in the making yeah beat to uh put some extra onto that uh, you weren't here for last summer but uh during academy we had a talk with a lot of the players uh, about who they were expecting uh who they were looking forward to going against when it came to the amateur teams sniper was the only name that came up repeatedly yep. that was the only name that uh formerly academy teams now semi-pro teams uh put respect on Right, and I mean, that respect was earned, given the fact that Sniper was one of the best tops, easily, outside of it was Amateur last year. And he definitely earned his spot here in Academy. Yukino, same thing. Makes it so exciting to see how they're going to continue to develop. At the early stages of the game, Yukino is going to look for potentially a bot side play. Uh, nothing too surprising. Yukino likes to go for the early ganks at any opportunity possible, but it's just a little bit challenging to get it into Illusionami. Yep, and I think part of it was to help escort the wave there going through, but it's looking like instead, Unforgiven is just going to go for the recall and walk their way back while Lost and Zazel push. It's worth noting, too, Yukino having Pryo these lanes really suits him just because he's a player who likes to go for these aggressive invades, who oh, needs his yeah. players to make space for him to be able to do so. Speaking of plays, hello, Tomio. Oh, Tomio, Tomio, where art thou, Tomio? Looking for pretty. Pretty should uh, be A-OK -okay right there, easily able to walk on out. Tomio just wants to uh, get the wave shoved in as fast as possible. Pretty new Kino, looking to match. And Sniper doing his best to try and prevent this big wave from getting stacked up. He's trying to trade with Fake God, but this one is tough because, I mean, early game in lane Renekton, this is kind of how you expect things to go. And it won't be a big wave necessarily that's crashing, so he does get that. And Yukino's oh, yeah, going to take this opportunity to invade. I mean, said it, Sejuani is better at skirmishing early on. Oh, Tomio. Oh, Tomio taking quite a bit of damage there. Yukino oh, right realizing uh, m &S uh -oh. is available, hopping in with the Valkyrie. They Yukino want him. is caught out in first blood, belongs to Tomio. 
We talked about it. Yukino loves to invade, but he needs his laners to have push to be there to be able to help pressure yeah. with him. I think Pretty was on a recall timer too. He was. He teleported back to lane. So that gives away some gold into Tomio in Cloud9's pocket overall. So that's a little brutal there, especially because Yukino omitted the flash. But you're still playing Sedge. You still have a lot of opportunities to make plays. And this bot lane, though, oh my god. Oh, oh my, oh, wait a minute. Lost just wants to get the kill right now. Unforgiven, punished out. Summoner is going to be burnt. It's heal for Destiny, matched by Zazel. But this Lucian Nami combo already looking to punish Unforgiven and Destiny. Yeah, this is what you expect. I mean, you got that recall off. You have the Serrated Dirk. This is going to be lost in Zazel's bot lane for quite a bit. And this gives Cloud9 that opportunity to start Drake stacking here. You can see it. Even though Lost is recalling, Zazel is on the move. MNS is on the move to at least set up a little bit of vision here. So the options are there for them. Cloud9 get this early objective. Surrounding it right here, Yukino cannot really do too much. Uh, Yukino did get stifled quite a bit by that first blood, so... A little bit of catch-up played by Yukino, but it's not going to be the biggest issue. Sejuani still plays really well as a kit, as a champion. And Yukino is a very creative jungler. Uh, we should be expecting the next gank to come out not too much longer now. Let's see where Yukino chooses to target. I, I was expecting a little bit more of a topside focus, longside sniper, but... Um, Unable to get that after the invade. Right, at this point, you're playing for level 6. And the sooner you get that, the sooner you'll be able to fight for this Herald. We're less than 2 minutes away. That's what both of these teams are going to set both their sights on. The question's going to be, are Cloud9 going to send their bot lane up? Is it just going to be Zazel on the move? How important is that Rift Herald to them? I think... If they want to go for it, rotating the bot lane topside is going to be very important because one, you're seeing Lost in terms of items, stats, has a lead right now, so that should be enough for them to get the advantage. Because if you just look at the top side of the map for these teams, I kind of favor Cloud9 a little bit, as long as Pretty holds on to that Emperor's Divide. I, I, I feel the same way to that regard. Um, not just for the top side of the map, but because of uh, how Lost has been playing so far. Lost and Zazel. I mean, there's a lot of experience on both of these players. Zazel, we know oh so well for Cloud9, but Lost had that uh, good tenure back on TSM. We got to play before moving on to a few other LCS teams now here in the uh, semi-pro league. Challenging it out with uh, quite the opponent here in Unforgiven. As you said, LEC, Summer, First Pro, All, D all, uh, all ADC, excuse me. <clears throat> but, um... Not much left to be had into this early game. Finally, Tomio starting up the Rift Herald over on the top side. It's looking like it's going to be conceded here. No camps really for Yukino to farm on that top side and a little behind in XP. Probably like you said, due to the death that we saw early on, the first blood. And that means this Herald is super big for Cloud9. There are going to be a lot of options for them to be able to drop it. I think bot lane is a place I'm keeping my eyes on in particular. Oh my god, Lost. Ooh. Yeah, good Six. time to keep your eyes over there, but ultimate whiffs by Yukino. Lost will be able to flash out, and uh, sometimes, sometimes you got to bluff it, sometimes you got to hold it. You pull the trigger too soon, it gets red. Cloud9 not going to lose too much down subs. Right, both flashes down out of the picture is pretty unfortunate. They got to be more careful in this lane now. And that kind of makes it a little more difficult for Tomio to play towards this bottom side because you want to set up a dive. I think you want to continue getting this Lucian fed so that Lost will be able to be a big damage contributor for these team fights in this early to mid game. And I think that's what we're going to see. I mean, camps are spawning for Tomio. He's going to show up on that bot side. Maybe after this recall, Lost and Zazel will get that opportunity. Where's he going to go for the recall? No, 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 just taking Scuttle. Yeah. Not for a second there, they might be trying to set up for a dive. That'd be very, very risky against uh, Cassante, especially Sniper piloting that. Yukino hovering towards this mid lane. Not too far off is Destiny. Both of these teams paying a lot of heavy respect towards each other, not trying to get away with too much of that BS that uh, we've seen these teams pull off in the past. A very slow start beat. 
For sure. Nothing really happening since that first blood came through, but, you know, props to both supports, looking for these mid roams, looking for these opportunities to make sure their other laners aren't getting jumped on unexpectedly, because that's how these games end up getting broken wide open. We've given props to Zazel in the past, and even yesterday, for finding these great timers, and Destiny being another good support we have in this league is also doing the same thing, which you love to see. And... Cloud9 Challengers, good recall timing coming out of Eminem's backs, grabs the package immediately, teleports into the mid lane. Um, this is Cloud9 looking to play for that dragon fight very soon. Uh, a minute. I'm pretty sure package only sits on you for a minute. So I find this right. timing right. very interesting from MS, and I'm hoping it's because they want to set up this dive right here. Yeah. Yeah, it is going to be towards the bottom lane. Got their timer set for that, so Yukino is down there to try and help protect. Ultimate going to be burnt out of Tomio, and now Cloud9 here. all aware. There are three members. They're going to have to get through. Package running right through the middle. Ultimate not going to land onto MNS. Tidal Wave knock up onto Unforgiven. Teleport going to be burnt by Pretty, but neither team willing to commit to the fight. Ah, uh, I'm going to be. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, turning right now over the wall. Tomio goes. Will be okay. Gets the flash to safety. Cloud9 still posturing forward though. Unforgiven's getting low. This poke's working out. A lot of the rockets of MS are finding their mark, and the health bar is drained away by 100 Thieves. But with no minion wave there, they can't reap the benefits of taking down that poke. Instead, gonna put down the Rift Herald. And this is kind of the same outcome. You don't get the kills on top of it, but you are gonna get that plate gold. You are gonna give lost this extra gold, which you're very happy about here. You see this lead starting to grow for Cloud9 as a result. I will say, I'm not a fan of that package timing. I see what they're going for, and the pressure ends up allowing them to get this rift uh, this dragon, excuse me, and it will be their second one. So the timing ends up working because I think the package will be up in these next couple of minutes. Actually, a little before we see that third dragon come up. But this time, MS, hold that package. You need it. Skirmish going on between Fake God and Sniper. It's a shame. It's a shame that they pick Cassante and Renekton. I would like to see a, something Why? a little bit more bloodthirsty between these two. I just want to those... see Sniper do Sniper things, Beat. What? Those are two very bloodthirsty champions, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, but we got to get past the laning phase. I mean, fair enough. We'll get there. We take a look. I'm impatient, Beat. <laughs> I can tell. It's okay, buddy. We'll get there. <laughs> Soon. We're a minute 30 laning phase. We'll be almost done by that point. And now we're looking at the gold. As we start to exit the laning phase, Cloud9, you see them across the board, have leads for themselves. They're small, but they will start to add up. And Cloud9 definitely wanting to bounce back after that 0-2 loss yesterday. And the big thing I think they were struggling with was, oh wait, lost. Ooh, lost. Oh, oh no. The punish coming out for Unforgiven. It's a trade of flashes though. But you can see right there, the bot lane of 100 Thieves Challengers aren't going to let you just bully them. They will fight back. Well, we're going to see big cooldown with the Lightning Crash not available. So they have to respect the fact that Maokai is in the area. Their Sejuani is nowhere nearby. And if they can get this turret, it's going to be the first one. So that will be a lot of bonus gold over to Lost yeah. and Zazel. With that, one more auto. There it goes. First brick will be found by Lost. Yeah, that's a lot of gold going over to this Lucian. And you can see it, it's starting to stack up. Um, and this is important because right now, Unforgiven is not where uh, Azari wants to be. You're looking at two items, right, Eric? And by that third dragon fight, I don't think Unforgiven will get there just because of how quickly Cloud9 have been taking them. So you have that plus the package. These Cloud9 will be very easily able to stack up to this dragon soul, theoretically. Theoretically. Cloud9 are wasting no time, and that is for sure. Now with that bot lane turret gone, it's a lane swap. Gale Force already done. Serrated Dirk still in the pocket for Lost, so Lost is pretty strong at the uh, moment, especially in the context of Unforgiven trying to play catch-up at the moment. Two minutes, 30 seconds before that dragon does spawn, and Cloud9 might think about moving their resource in that direction, but for the time being, let's grab the Rift Herald. I mean, it's perfect. You rotate your bot top, like you said, and 100 Thieves is slow to answer. In fact, they aren't even really going to get that opportunity. It should be an easy Herald, unless 100 Thieves have something to say about it. Ooh, Yukino, a little bit too slow. 
He can still deny the eye, though. Standing in front of it. Cloud9. Ostering forward. MS on the flank. Ultimate comes out. Lance on the loss. Loss able to cleanse it away. Tidal Wave rings through. Sniper right coming there. in with the all out. Able to pick up one. Tomio falls. MS in the middle of five. Gets ripped apart by Sniper. And 100 Thieves Challengers will take two on the team fight win. And that's big. A lot of extra gold into their pockets, but they couldn't deny the Rift Herald after all. The all out pushed Tomio close enough. Funny enough to be able to pick it up. So that's an option they have for themselves. And even though that's a good fight for 100 Thieves, I think Cloud9 still come out happy with this result because he's 10 seconds on MNS, like he'll be back on the map long before this dragon spawns. And you still have the Rift Herald. Tomio can very easily drop this mid as the dragon is about to spawn. And that will give Cloud9 the space to move into this bottom side of the river where they already have a good amount of vision, by the way to be able to just clear out even further and get control of the pit. And you can see, moving the resources over towards that dragon pit to set up, because they already picked up the Rift Herald from earlier. That's this play we're spotting out here. Tomio, barely, let's see what he does. He just walks up to it, does he? No, he gets, was, so he gets hit by the all out, oh, it was knocked all, up. Oh, right. And it basically knocked him into place, but MNS is in trouble. All right, MNS pushed back by the Emperor's Divide. Pretty on the opposite side. We'll sick the Sand Soldiers oh. on MNS. MNS wants to return one kill right back, though. Will not be able to get it onto Yukino. Still goes down in the grand scheme, but the play for Cloud9 is the mid lane. Rift Herald crashing into that tower. That tower going down. They'll continue the siege. Unforgiven Destiny need to match it. That was a big commitment for 100 Thieves, and you're seeing it cost them big time, Eric. MNS TP to that top play. He wasn't going to be there. For, he wasn't going to be at this dragon unless he recalled very quickly. And look what's there. Sure, Pretty is getting to auto this turret, but you lost your mid tier one. That Fake God was able to push this bottom lane in very deeply, and you see the pressure that Cloud9 has over the map. And MNS, of course, on the recall, has picked up the package. It's going to be an easy. Dragon pickup. That's the mountain soul point for Cloud9, Eric. A very oh. powerful soul. And they're just five minutes away from collecting it. And MNS just taking the package over to the top lane. Not even bothered with uh, the dragon shenanigans going off because Hunter Thieves, they're not matching it. They're not going to contend it. It does put a lot oh. of pressure now onto Hunter Thieves to find something soon. Otherwise, they're going to concede away this dragon soul. Looking to find it on MNS. Tough. He's got the package. Easy escape. Mm -hmm. And the timer. I mean, it's going to be maybe like 10 seconds late, but it'll more or less be up when the next dragon spawns. And again, Cloud9 walking away with almost everything. Yeah, they're down two kills. But when you think about structures, objectives, everything else, Cloud9 are miles ahead of 100 Thieves at this point. And with how far behind Unforgiven has been set, which isn't very far, mind you, it's gonna be tough for him to get to that two item mark. He might just make it by the time the dragon spawns, but that's the big thing to keep an eye out on because that's where the Zeri wants to be. Great map control coming out from Cloud9, holding that vision over in the bottom quadrant. Um, not much to really contend here onto this top side, so uh, not a real reason to fight for the vision. Under Thieves, they're trying to find their way back into this. I mean, they got great team fight. They got some pretty good scaling to work with. Can't get caught out by Cloud9 anymore. Got to be careful around these choke points. Tomio and Zazel keep setting up very devastating, uh, devastating amounts of crowd control. And now you see Cloud9 covering. Oh, wait a minute. Sniper's here. Oh, Sniper going after Zazel. Going for the all-out onto Zazel. Still chasing him down. Getting him down to about half health. Whoa. Tomio looking to walk away. MNS able to get one onto Sniper, who gets instantly popped. Tomio still holding the line, here. but here comes Fake God. The Gator here to defend the Swamp. Unforgiven hopping over the wall to get to safety, but two have fallen for the Thieves, and we're looking to make it three because Fake God on the cutoff Ooh. grabs Destiny. Is not content with that. Wants to get the Emperor as well. Emperor's Divide to push away Fake god but three lost for the thieves big win for cloud nine there covering mns this time when he shows up on the top lane and the all out not working out for sniper it means mns continues to push this wave in and now it's the top side of the map 
in full control here for the side of Cloud9. They're taking jungle camps. They're setting up vision. They're knocking down structures. And with Baron up on the menu in 10 seconds, we could see a very early one come through for Cloud9. Take another look at that last exchange coming through. I mean, it, it, it was uh, it, it was the right play, yes. at least in the eyes of 100 Thieves, yep. but I'm surprised at how quickly Sniper gets popped here. I, well, I mean, you when you all out, you do more damage, you get your cooldowns lowered, but you lose a lot of health and resistances, so you yeah. are very squishy. The biggest thing there is that all out onto Zazel, he needed that to go over the wall, but he didn't measure it right, and because of that, he couldn't bring Zazel into the team to take him out of the picture. You get that kill, this fight looks very different. 400 Thieves, but instead, the play doesn't work out. Sniper dies, Destiny dies, and just they lose so many people in the process here. Absolute control for Cloud9 challengers. Uh, even with the scoreline right now, it doesn't really matter. They're getting everything they need to on the map, and uh, oh. they're not. They're going to grab pretty Whoa. as well. Easy pickup over there. Cloud9 still netting in more. At a good time, too. A minute 30 before that dragon spawns, and this territory is very much red in Cloud9's name. Yeah, we got the objective bounties up here. Even the game says Cloud uh, Cloud9 is kind of stomping you. Maybe you need a little help, 100 Thieves. And you can see it now with this vision toggle. How good the map control has been from Cloud9. Yeah. You can see it. There's just so much darkness with the exception of one ward there in favor of 100 Thieves. And it's just true on both sides of the map here. You, they have very little information here. That's why you see them playing 4-1, having Sniper alone on the top side since, you know, Asante, and then playing as a core so that no one can really get popped very easily. The yeah, MNS putting pressure in this bottom lane. The rest of Cloud9 challengers kind of flexing around this mid into the jungle, into the bottom, back and forth, pulling apart 100 Thieves challengers, waiting for the right choke point. Oh. Well, it's going to be 100 Thieves going for the engage onto Zazel. They find nothing. Teleport comes through from Fake God. 100 Thieves challengers, they'll get some priority onto this river, but is that going to be enough beat? I don't think so. You commit two big ultimates here on the side of 100 Thieves. You don't get any kills. You get, I don't even think you get any summoner spells in the process outside of Fake God's teleport. So now, Mountain Soul on the line. Cloud9 are in control. <sighs> and lost. Fearless throwing in the calling in the face of 100 Thieves challengers. MNS still side laning. Oh, trying to step away. Will take down Whoa, the tower, giving up his life in the process. It's fed over to Pretty. But the attention was drawn. Cloud9 heading straight for the Drake. This would be Dragon Soul right now. Opportunity for 100 Thieves. They have a Cloud9 chance. looking to peel off. Lost bringing in a lot of damage onto Yukino. Destiny running low as well. Unforgiven's there alone in the pit. Pretty on the flank. Ultimate pulled. Running away. 100 Thieves. Yukino can get over the wall to get the steal. 3.9k health remains. Cloud9 not going on it. Oh, second guessing themselves. Tomio. Posturing up, he doesn't have flash, so he can't close that distance fast enough, and this dragon belongs to 100 Thieves, but does the fight. Fake God rounding up the Thieves into the corner, into the pit, pulling in Fake God is going to be General Sniper, Whoa, but already lost. one picked up by Lost, who will get kill number one onto Pretty. Teleport coming through, and Eminus has rejoined the battle. Package. Has the package as well, an express delivery, baby, onto 100 Thieves challengers, tearing apart the team with a triple kill. And what a great play. It wasn't the bait, Eric. And it was just the delay for MNS. They'll give up the dragon. And when he comes back up, he will teleport for the fight. They've earned themselves with that clever play. Almost an ace, a Baron in hands, and a 10k gold lead. Cloud9 reassert their control. Goodness gracious. I was wondering if Cloud9 were... Having a blunder right there, Beat, it, it, it seemed like they were getting torn apart. They were going to just give up the uh, the dragon with nothing really had. But that teleport from MNS, I mean, yeah, they, they bought time for it. And now the dividend's paid. It's going to be Baron. 
and you'll see the replay here. The reason that they back off in the first place is that MNS overstays his welcome bot side. Four versus five, it's not worth flipping the dragon. And I've said this before, you can play for two things in this situation, but not both. It's are you going to take the steal or are you going to take the fight after Cloud9? Choose the fight. And in doing so, they buy time for MNS to make this insane play. The three dragons you stacked up for yourself is what opened up this possibility. It opened up 100 Thieves to get torn apart like this, and it gave Cloud9 the Baron. And these are the hands of MNS. Fearless this man is. Hops into fights, throwing caution to the wind. I mean, he, he spent some time in so many different regions putting on these great performances you know had issues with different teams that's what he's looking to try and fix right here and so far it's looking great mns is performing uh, that was a great flank to come through and now cloud nine are in position where they can just strangle out the thieves they hold these sieges both in the mid and in the top and these turrets on the outside are not long for this world you see the waves being synced up here we go. These engages that come out from Cloud9. Hunter Thieves can't find one of their own. Lost hops forward. Destiny getting chunked out. Now the inhibitor under attack. The Thieves can only watch as their bla uh, as their base gets lit up in a blaze. It's a gold diff, Eric. It's a Baron diff. It's a Cloud9 diff. As they, you, there's nothing 100 Thieves can do. They're trying to all in. So they can save this tower, but these barrened up minions are going to be chipping away at them. And Tomio is leading more minions into the base. Someone's going to have to walk away. And as soon as they do, this Baron is done. Or this uh, turret. You're walking away right now to deal with those barrened up minions and now trying to bounce back. Sniper and Yukino holding the line for this turret, but the damage is chipping away. Demolition crew doing work, pulled back is going to be MNS, but Fake God still there. Emperor's Divide comes out, Sniper looking for Tomio, Tomio still standing, Tomio still up, Sniper has yet to finish him off, and Tomio He's will still flash alive. out, Lost hopping in, being the frontline Lucian that chases away the thieves, and like that, they don't lose a single member, Cloud9 continue the siege. And they get what they want, it was a little longer than we expected. But that's another turret in the base out of the picture. Top and hip exposed, mid and hip down. And one minute for Cloud9 to collect their delayed prize, the Mountain Soul. This time, 100 Thieves shouldn't have any chance at being able to take it unless they're able to set up some kind of insane pick. But with the Baron empowered recalls, Cloud9, they're already back on the map. You can see it on the mini map, yeah. they're head approaching the river as we speak. There's no way Hunter Thieves get this, right? I mean, it's a 12k deficit right now. Uh, Yukino does have a level deficit uh, onto Tomio. Vision being established by Cloud9 Challengers, teleporting the whole crew in. Now MNS showing up. Battle line has been drawn, and it's all the way into the jungle of 100 Thieves Challengers. And see how far up they can posture. You see Fake God? Taking this position, making sure anybody who walks this way will lose a chunk of their health in the process. And it's so easy for Cloud9. They get this push mid lane. They're going to be easily able to walk for the dragon. Only thing, really, MNS, because of the package timings, won't have packages available. But they have so much gold, it doesn't matter. This poke coming out from Cloud9. It's, it's a Lucian and Corky that just ran at your team down. This isn't even some, like... Lux and Italy shenanigans, they're just that strong. I mean, I'll be fair to uh, Corky, the, the, those, those missiles add up quite a bit when you have Luden's Echo, but with that, Cloud9, they're gonna get the Dragon Soul. There's not a thing 100 Thieves can do about it. I mean, no, you are just so far behind. You reach that second item that Zeri loves to get through the CD, but ultimately it doesn't matter because you're so far behind everybody else. There's, you're outranged, you're outdamaged, you're outmatched at the moment as Unforgiven. And it's gonna take some kind of insane flank, some kind of insane isolated play. You catch somebody alone, like MNS, who has overextended at times, and that could be the start of something here. But MNS, package in hand. He just, he just doesn't use these for dragons. He wants to fight, he wants blood. He's poking away by himself. He's poking away at the thieves. MNS, an absolute beast, and 
even Yukino is afraid to pull the trigger, afraid to hop onto MNS because MNS has great reaction time. Yep. Um, so fast to get away from a lot of these plays that Eves want to do on him. And that's why he can stand right here. We'll finally put down the package, and that's going to be another inhibitor falling by the wayside. Cloud9 will take it. There's only one more in the top lane. And this is brutal, man. You see the recall coming through. They don't want to take more than... Right off more than they can chew because they have gold to spend, Eric, and they have another objective on the docket in the name of the Baron. You see the vision? They have to respect. They don't know if a cheese play is coming through from Cloud9, but on Cloud9's perspective, they have recalled, they are fed, Lost has that Navori quick blades, which means you thought those cullings hurt before. Keep an eye on whoever's health bar now. And Baron up in one second, it is Cloud9's by birthright. Hundred Thieves, not much really left in the tank. Yukino and Sniper have to frontline the Living Daylights out of Cloud9. They start with Zazel. Zazel's not going to be the target, though. Tidal Wave goes through, and Yukino starts to back off. Falls to about a 1,000 health remaining. The poke on MNS of MNS coming out from the sidelines. Landing onto the blue buff. Not much else to be found. MNS just going to hop right over towards Mine. 100 Thieves. This dude is absolutely fearless. And the thieves are being chased out pretty, almost tanked by a rocket of MNS. And they have to just clear these waves out. They have to go back to their base and heal up. And what does that do? It opens up Cloud9 for the opportunity to take this Baron. Super minions have to be addressed. No one is going to bother you. It's just you and the big purple worm. As Cloud9 will get more gold in their pockets, and they will get the tools to lock down game one. Aaron for Cloud9. Inhibitor down in the bottom lane. Two just waiting to fall to the hands of Cloud9. And not even a reset going to come out. Cloud9, they just want to end this right now. So they're going to lead in these Baron empowered minion waves to close out top lane, mid lane. This could be the death push. Hey, you're ahead so much gold. This is definitely within their purview. Take down these two inhibitors. Somebody steps out of line. You full send it here. You have the nature's grasp. Homeo's ultimate. At this point, you can see Fake God. Getting a little aggro. And oh, lost. 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 Ooh. Lost doing damage to Sniper. And, man, lost on this Lucian. Definitely something else to witness. He knows his range. He knows it quite well. More damage. Ooh, dodges away, gets away from the ultimate of Yukino. Lost is so good. Out comes the Emperor's Divide, but Tomio will we lock go. down pretty. Gets one kill. Fake God chasing on the sniper. Yukino can't front line anymore. Unforgiven looking to hold the line. Gets chased right past the Nexus. Two down for the Thieves. And Cloud9, it was surgical. It was precise. It was methodical. It is a victory coming out 32 minutes into the game. And this is the Cloud9 we expected, Eric. Clean, like you said, precise, very deliberate with their gameplay. And it was just an amazing game, one from them so far. From that early game all the way until the end, it felt like they had control the entire time. They were the ones dictating the pace, and it really all started with that first blood that came through onto Yukino. I mean, even, uh, even outside of that first blood, I mean... A bot lane that we saw basically Unforgiven couldn't have any presence because Lost and Zazel were going absolutely bonkers down there to stifle them even with all the farm you got onto Unforgiven and the rest of the crew just did work for Cloud9 uh, you gotta absolutely love it and for our super heavyweight Smackdown Cloud9 will take game number one but this is a best of two we're gonna take a moment to throw it over to short break when we return we'll have Kangas for a halftime segment so be sure to stay tuned <laughs> 